Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Kiesel, and I'm here to talk about how we use the FMS for injury prediction. You know, it's been 10 years since we published the first study looking at FMS in injury, and I just want to take a few minutes to take you through the path that we've gone using the FMS and now many other tools to help us with injury uh, pr prediction and prevention. The very first study we did was a small sample in professional football, and we just found a cut score on the FMS that separated those that got injured and didn't get injured. That injury definition wasn't ideal, it wasn't the best study, it was really just simply pilot data for us to say, you know what, there's enough here in the FMS to keep looking. So we went to a much larger study, a larger sample, still in professional football, and we found that the cut score that we established in the first study held up, and also we found in that study that asymmetry, a right-left difference, was predictive as well. Now, None of these were strong enough by themselves to say we've got a one-off tool for injury prediction. That's not what it was for. It was to figure out what variables really should go into a larger model. So we got to a, a larger college study and we put everything together and what we found was the FMS, pass-fail, asymmetry, we added things from the Y-balance test, and we looked at previous injury and even pain with movement. Putting those things together, we were able to say, listen, if you have multiple factors, you're in a high risk category. So we're able to take athletes and categorize them high risk versus low risk. So we did that in college. We then took that same concept out to a large military study. And what we found in the military study, looking at soldiers going forward prospectively for one year, we looked at 86 different questions. We looked at 29 different movements, so we had a lot of variables to look at. And what we found was the more risk factors you had, of course, the more likely you were to be injured. We found some pretty neat things. One of the big ones was dorsiflexion range of motion in and of itself, closed chain, a five degree difference, five degree right to left difference was a risk factor all by itself. Upper quarter and lower quarter, YBT. Various results from there was part of the model as well. And then we found interesting, not just previous injury, have you been hurt or not, but what's your self-recovery? How do you report yourself recovered? And believe it or not, you had to be over 92 and a half recovered on a 100 point scale, meaning 100's I'm perfect. Anything below 92 and a half was a predictor. So not just I feel pretty good, these people have to feel almost perfect or they're still at risk for injury. And the other big one here was simply pain with any of our movements. Most risk studies don't even consider pain with movement. Heck, you're already hurt. <laughs> so what we proved there was if you have pain with movement, you're going to lose time in the next year. So that's really our path of how we utilize the FMS from the very beginning 10 years ago all the way up through now how we put multiple factors together to identify an athlete's risk for injury. For more information, visit functionalmovement.com.